Hey guys, thanks for coming back to see us again. It is Sob Talk Live, the show by a couple of guys who love their sobs, four guys who love their sobs. Glad to have you. I am Lee Kelso. And I'm Mark Romansher. Glad to see everyone here. Yeah, we are tonight going to be focusing on, uh, we, we labeled it the sob you do not know, the 97X. We're interested in sobs of all types, even when even when they're really kind of a crappy GM product that they foisted off onto sobs, right, Mark? <laughs> yep. Now, there's an interesting story behind the NISO Next, and tonight we're here to learn more about it. And yeah, also, so you guys... go ahead. And also, I was going to say that we have a special guest tonight who is here going to tell us all about them. He's actually an owner and a gentleman who actually rebuilds them and works on them. So he can tell us a little more about some of the fine details of owning these vehicles. Yeah. So, uh, see now I'm, I'm Mr. Critic on this one. Uh, this is a Chevy trailblazer in Saab clothes. And to me, uh, this is just an example of how Saab was just murdered by GM, but, but our guest tonight is going to tell us that I'm wrong. Right, Mark? That's right. His his name is Saunders Lee. He's here who owns 18 Saabs in his entire fleet. And five of those are the 97X. And two out of that collection there are the rare Saab 97X Aero that features a 400 horsepower engine borrowed from the Corvette. Mm. So Saunders, welcome to the broadcast. Glad to have you here. So uh, I'm wrong about the 97X. It's, it's not a GM piece of crap in a new package. Uh, <clears throat> first, good evening, Lee. Good evening, Mark. Good to see you guys. Um, yes, my opinion on that vehicle, uh, yes, it's badge engineered. Um, there were minimal modifications to make it what it is, but those modifications were significant. Oh, so uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit greater detail, but let's let's show people exactly what we're talking about here. So, um here are a couple of your 97Xs, and, and how many of these things do you have? Currently, I have five in the fleet, uh, technically six, but the guy's paying it off. I'm letting him make payments, so truthfully, it's five. And here's two of them. What are their age ranges? <clears throat> One of them is a um, – I'm trying to wait for the picture to come up. Um, you're probably talking about the two. One's an 05, and the other one's an 06. And one's a 5.3, and the other one is a 4.2, which is a six-cylinder. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, you know, my specialty is I look for them sick because, um, unlike you guys, I'm not rich. I have to ball on a budget. So yeah. I, find them, I find them sick. I nurse them back to health. I play with them, and then I eventually sell them, that type of thing. Oh, well, so your heart's in the right place. That's great. So let me show you this. This caught my attention. So, you know, I'm out doing some research and I come to Car and Driver Magazine's review of the 97. And they say it's an unconvincing and overpriced badge job of the Chevy Trails Blazer. Despite sob cues, the interior is cheap and the underlying SUV has noticeable chassis flex and feels uh, and feels clumsy. But Saab's revised suspension calms XX body motions and quicker steering ratio helps on center feel. And then the 390 horsepower, six liter V8 in the aero should appeal to the fans of power. So are they on target here, Saunders, or is that, uh, is that misleading? They're fairly close. It's the most expensive of the models um, of the GMT, which is the, there were six platforms, um, six um, makes on that platform. Um, Chevy Trailblazer, GMC Envoy, um, Olds Bravada, Buick Rainier, and the Isuzu Ascender, and of course, 97X. Um, it's by far the best looking. Um, it has a lot of features that a lot of the others don't. Um, you know, the biggest thing is the handling. Um, Bob Lutz, who a lot of people should be familiar with from, uh, he used to be, um, he used to run saw back in the day. He said that that should have been the suspension that all of them had, not just Saab. And um, if you'll go back and uh, some of the things that turned me on to it was if you'll um, Motor Week, they did a review on it. And, and I actually, I just bumped into it when I was scrolling, uh, was scrolling through YouTube and they had a very positive review on it. And then uh, a gentleman named Craig Bow on his Saabs of America site on YouTube he did a review 
showing the different levels, which is um, linear art and of course the arrow. And it made, but by then I'd already had my first sob, but watching his video really helped me to understand them a lot more. But by then I was already smitten. Speaking of that, you said you were smitten with Saab. Being that you're 97X owner and you own many other Saabs, how did you get addicted to Saabs in the first place, Saunders? Um, I'm a weird dude. <laughs> I've always liked, <laughs> I forgot to tell you, I've always liked or gone after what everyone else did. And so uh, growing up in Oklahoma, uh, it was pretty much Saab, I mean, oh, excuse me, not Saab, Chevy, Dodge, and um, Ford. You know, that's all you saw everywhere. And, you know, thankfully being a service brat, I would go out to Tinker and I would see these guys out there. They had like little TR7s and and then um, I came across my first bull nose sob and I'm like, what in the world is with this thing, you know? And uh, it just intrigued me. And so, and then I saw a 99 turbo and it was over. I'm like, these things, there's something going on with this company. And I've been hooked ever since, especially after I drove my first one. That's awesome, uh, Saunders. Also, I remember you telling us about a story a little while ago about one of your first experiences with a Saab where you transported a friend of yours and he had another vehicle and somehow his luggage didn't fit. You're on the way to the airport. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Yeah, actually, I was going to take um, uh, the commander. I was going to take his, um, they'd had a baby. And so I was going to take him, the wife, the baby, all of their luggage and the stroller and all that stuff. I was going to take them to the airport, which is in Dallas. And we were stationed in Wichita Falls, like about three hours away. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, I could take you out there, no problem. And I show up in my Oldsmobile Cutlass. And I'm like, I can't get all that stuff in my car. Ain't no way. And he's looking at me for a second with this weird look. And then he goes, okay, we're going to take my car, but don't be joyriding in my car. And when you get done, just take it right back to the house. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. And he opens the garage up, and unbeknownst to me, he had a 92, I mean, not 92, he had an 82 900 turbo. And I was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, I was just like, just lost my mind. And then um, I loved it so much, so much, that when I picked them up from the airport, I picked them up in my Saab turbo. <laughs> you were hooked yeah. at that point, yeah. Oh, so, absolutely. So you've got 18 Saabs now, other than the 9.5s, what's in your fleet? And there's a lot. Okay. Oh my gosh. There's, there's five C 900s. Um, only one's an automatic. The rest are all five speeds. Um, let's see, there's two big convertibles. Um, there's five, um, nine, seven X's. There's three, um, nine, five arrow wagons. Um, I'm leaving some stuff out. Forgive me, but there's, there's a lot of them. You got there's a lot of them. Well, and I noticed this. This is I like how you use your 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 nine uh, seven X. Uh, let's pull this up. Uh, that's the right way to sob towing a sob. I mean, what's better than that? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So um, the first one I picked up, I picked it up. Um, I was up visiting a dear friend of mine up in uh, Oregon, and you know we we're going down the street, and I spotted it in a tow lot. I mean, not in a tow lot, in a used car lot. And the funny thing was I had just left Gary Saab. I always have to stop and see what they have. And I was just going by and I spotted it in like the fifth or it was like on the back row of this used car lot covered with dust. And I, you know, so I you know, whipped around and went in and saw it and I said, what's the deal? And the problem was the encoder motor, which can be um, a fairly common problem with them. And that's one of the things that makes the Saab unique versus the other platform. It's the only one that has automatic four wheel drive. So when the rear wheels start to spin, the fronts automatically kick in because of this encoder motor. The other five platforms, you have to manually put it in four wheel drive. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that piece was bad and the, they misdiagnosed it. They were told it needed a new transfer case and transmission. So he, he dumped it. I, I got it for it was like less than a thousand bucks. Went home, started doing my homework. You know, thank you all you guys who post videos and all the guys who post online you know, it's it's really appreciated and it's really needed in our community to keep us together. And I read up and it's oh yeah, encoder motor. Yanked it out, boom, that did the trick. So I got this really nice vehicle with only a hundred thousand miles, beautiful nine seven X with a six cylinder. A lot of people snub the six cylinder. It's a very capable vehicle. And um, I put hundred and ten trouble free miles on it. And a lot of those miles were towing other sobs, including nine seven X's. 
So a nine yeah. seven two hundred nine seven. That's great. So Kelly is asking, uh, are they running? And and clearly he, he labeled that as a joke. But um, you do use these trucks a lot, right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, they, I use them all, all. Five of them I'm running. Two, two, two of the nine seven X's do not run. They both. I bought them both from the same. Oh, we just lost Saunders. Oh goodness. He'll jump back in in a little bit. Um, but, you know, one of the things about this particular uh, model that they produced, I think he's coming back in. Here it comes. Let's get him back online. Oh. There he oh, is. There we go. We got see okay, sorry about that. No uh, I'm in a very rural area with poor with poor um, Internet. I'm sorry. But um, the, the five threes are notorious for the uh, DOD issues. And one had that. And then so she bought a six cylinder. And somehow or another, she messed up the motor in that one. So I bought them both. And boom, there you go. Awesome. So what, other, what is his DOD? The others run. What, Say again. What is DOD displacement on demand? Is that where they shut off cylinders uh, to yes. save fuel? Is they that how that works? Cylinders. Yeah, de deactivate cylinders when there's when there's not a heavy load on the engine. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Now yeah. this this five point uh, <clears throat> this DOD feature was this only in the five point three motor that came in the nine seven X arc? Is that correct? Correct. That was only with the 5.3 motor. Um, some of the, these are all LS based motors, the GM motor, and a lot of them tended to have issues with, with the lifters. But the good thing about, uh, don't let that ever scare you off with that motor. It's a very, very easy motor to rebuild. Um, a lot of people simply disable the feature, which is kind of like a band aid, but you can, you can easily just yank the heads off, um, swap the cam put in the new lifters and that thing will be bulletproof for a long, long, long time. Awesome. So we're looking yeah. here at, I'm pretty sure this is the, uh, this, the 300 horsepower out of the, um, six liter, correct? This is the, the Corvette engine. Yeah. So forgive me. I, I can't see pictures of what you're posting up. So I, is that the one, with just the engine sitting by itself? No, that's just it's just says the GM performance division. So I'm assuming that's the oh okay, yeah. So yeah, so that's that's actually the 6.0. Yeah. That which is yes, which is the LS2 Corvette motor. And, and that's only, only for the arrow. And that is, oh. I think, isn't that the most powerful engine that GM had put in any one of their uh, four-wheel drive vehicles up to that point? At at the time, correct. Mm-hmm. Yes, at the time, correct. And and also, I need to say the the Chevy Trailblazer SS also mm -hmm. has that same drive. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I'd read. Yeah. So what did so can you feel the difference in the modifications that Saab made in in putting these things together? Oh yes, and and you know, funny thing is, my niece has a Trailblazer, and a good friend of mine, she has an Envoy, and I've driven them both. And, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, these are actually pretty decent, you know, for the price and what you get. I'm like, these are pretty nice. And then when I drove mine, I had only driven it on a few surface streets. I hadn't driven it much. I, when I first bought it, I bought it in Portland. And then I drove directly to Seaside. Uh, and I didn't think much about it while I was driving it. I was just enjoying the fact that, wow, I got a Saab 97X. You know, I got a Saab truck, you know. <laughs> and um, I, I'm sorry, I get stupid. Like, that. just, I love my Saabs. And so but yeah, when man. we got out to Seaside, my niece was there and um, I had her blocked in. She had to run to the store and I said, here, just take mine. And she came back. She's like, oh, my God, that thing drives so sweet. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's the same engine as yours. She goes, no, when you go around the corners, it doesn't do all of this. Mine had 110,000 on it. Hers only had 80,000 on it. She goes, it feels so much better. Wow. And she goes, not to mention, she goes, not to mention it looks a lot better, too which is true. It's by far the best looking one. And oh, um, one of the things, yeah, one of the things I like about them is even though they're, you know, you know, they're like years old now, you know, they're, you know some of them are well, they're over 10 years old. They still look contemporary. And um, another feature that I like, and I, I think people should rescue more of them or keep more of them. All of the new little cute utes and baby SUVs, <clears throat> Some of them would get better gas mileage, all that type of things. But these are actually on a truck chassis or a truck frame. Mm -hmm. So these things can tow. I think the four cylinders tow 5,500 pounds. The uh, the 5.3 and the 6.0, they're 6,500 tow rating. That's pretty darn respectable. 
None of these uh, new SUVs, they're all unibody chassis. They're not rated to do that. Yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah. you said you buy them, yeah. you said you buy them wounded and, uh, <laughs> this one looks pretty wounded. Uh, tell me the story on this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I've always wanted, you know, all of us who are in the sobs, of course, depending on what we have, if it's a 9,000, we want a 9,000 arrow. If it's a 900, we want an SPG. Um, and so the same thing, if you got a 9.7, you want the arrow, you know, plain and simple. And I wanted one, I wanted one, and I almost, you know, plopped down about eight grand on one that needed a lot of work. And I said, nah, nah, I'm not going to do it because I'm cheap. So anyway, um, <laughs> and I, I was you know, driving and I was like, ah, oh, it's true, I'm sorry. And so I was like, you know, I said, let me look online, let's see what they got, on, what they have on Copart. And I'll be darned, the same day, they had three hmm. arrows three. up That's for awesome. sale. were wrecked in the right front like that one. And the third one had a little bit more damage. It was in Chicago. One was in Dallas, and the other one was in Phoenix. And I got the Dallas one, and I got the Phoenix one. And um, like I said, I was about to pay 8000 for one that needed a lot of work. It had been abused. And I got... Both of these cars, I, I bought them running and driving, you know, just the just the wreck damage. And so I had the one towed to the house in Oklahoma. That, you know, they only charged me two hundred bucks to tow it up there. That was a blessing. And so out the door with that one, all told, I was in it for twenty five hundred. That's not including, um, you know, I had to run to the boneyard and get a fender, bumper cover, the headlight, and then the little bucket behind it supports it. That's all I needed to get it oh, wow. back up and going. And then, yeah, and then the one in Phoenix, um, I, I went and picked that one up at the yard there. And that was a great day because my buddy, John, who lives in Utah, I rode down with him in his truck and we went down there to fix the water pump on his son's 9.3 SS. And then, then we were going to tow the 9.7X back. And while we were there, Tom Donnie came by. <laughs> and, um, no joke. And, uh, yeah, so, because his son lives there in the same area. So I had called up Tom and Tom came by and spent some time with, he was like, if you want to sell that thing, let me know. <laughs> and it's funny. And it's funny him saying that because when I was up at the museum, that's another place. If you've never been, you have to go to the museum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was at the museum, that's when I saw my first nine, seven X up close and personal. And I'm like, wow, this thing, I mean, it was, you know, of course, if it's in this museum, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And so, um, but, and then that whet my appetite more, but you know, again, being cheap, it's out of my budget. And, um, but I would talk to another gentleman, another good friend of mine, Robert Grexler, who's up in New York, you know, you know, he would just be telling me about how nice his was. And it's currently down because he's, he's doing some monster stuff to his, you know, the, from the perform performance standpoint, but it just whet my appetite. And I'm like, I gotta have the best of the best. And I got lucky and ended up getting two the same day and I only missed the third one because I lost my signal. And oh. when the signal came back, the auction was already done. I'm like, oh. So, so you know, I have the other one, but it's going to my best friend. You know, he's like, um, he has a white one that um, that he's selling. And then when he sells the white one, he's just going to buy the arrow from me. He's another longtime sob guy, like myself. So, Mark, yeah. you've done some shopping on these online. They're out there for sale, right? You can find them. What kind of prices were you seeing? Okay. So, I did a search on some of the regular car sites, you know, car gurus, you know, tabled on eBay a little bit. So, mm -hmm. if you're going to look at something that's on like a retail site like car gurus, I was seeing them anywhere between about like 5,000 all the way up to 10,000, depending on what condition, miles, and stuff like that. So, that would be like retail from a dealership type environment. Um, yes, you can go out and get examples that are well kept and so forth in a retail environment. I guess what Saunders was doing is chasing after the, the co-part and the wrecked ones and bring them mm -hmm. back, which is much more honorable and noble, I think, but that's just my opinion. Um, no, no, agree. <laughs> yeah. but yes, they are out there. So you could still go do searches for these vehicles on retail websites, um, you know, and still find them. Um, they are getting fewer and far in between, but they're still prevalent out there. I think the 97X is pretty, pretty well out there just because it's a GM platform and it's still, you know, rather popular to, to work on these vehicles, especially what Saunders was telling me before, the parts on these things are cheap. It's 
on, it is GM yeah. parts, the GM engine. So you can go get a, you know, a water pump for 40, 50 bucks, or you can go get a, you know, some gaskets and stuff like that for not too bad. So the parts are pretty cheap. So these vehicles, they're SUVs, they're on a truck chassis, they can tow, they're cheap yeah. to maintain. Parts are not hard yeah. to find. They're what, 2006, 2005 to 2009. So yeah. property taxes aren't going to be that bad on them because, you know, there you stuff go. like that. So there's a lot of factors that are positives for this platform. Even though people yeah. like to bash any GM crossover Saab thing, it's like, oh no, GM kills everything. But still, yes, we have the Saab purists and we have the Saab modernists and whatever Saab analogy you want to make to the other people out there. But the point is, is that this platform is has a lot of positives and it's still worth it for its utilitarian purposes alone. I mean, you can you imagine, you know, taking one of those, you know, more modern SUVs and putting like, you know, 20 bags of mulch in the back and putting the seats down or hauling stuff with that or hooking up a trailer and hauling things around. Sure. But, you know, this thing's built a little more stout and it handles better. Man, all the positives are there, at least for us car guys, because Saab car yeah. guys, oh. We know what to look for. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, they, yes, we do. yeah. They, they are the best. Then, I mean, I think they are very attractive. I like the exterior. And this interior, I think, is really pretty. It's That's pretty stand-up. Stupid soft yeah. cup holder, notwithstanding. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's that's one of my pet peeves about the interior is the cup holder. But, you know. Um, you know, wait, you know, let me just go minutes. back here. You can't see this, Saunders, but I want to make sure everybody notices they even put the ignition in the floor, right? I mean, right. In, yeah, right there. In the, the center, center console. console. Yeah. Right there. Yes. It's Saab, it's yeah. Saab, Saab DNA. <laughs> even, yes, even exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's there. I'd love to have been in the room when the engineers were told, okay, you're going to take the trailblazer <laughs> and we're going to make it a Saab. Can you imagine what those Saab engineers must have been thinking? Because these were built in Moraine, Ohio, I think, right? Weren't they built right there on the, on the plant? Yeah, they were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh. So he could, if you could imagine the conversations engineers had, it's like they would have had to have, um, I don't know, talked about, oh, man, what don't we have to fix on this thing? You know, they're, I, yeah. I bet they're probably thinking, oh, man. The quality of this thing, the so on and so forth. I mean, goodness, I can only imagine what the, <laughs> the sub engineers are going through. But it appears they did it. They did the, they made the changes that made this a better platform than all of the other um, <laughs> nine seven X's. Ben, they did. Yeah. And we're looking at yeah. your white one here, Saunders. Yes. We lost you there for a second. Glad to have you oh, back. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, um, we're looking at you. We're looking at your white uh, Saab 97X now, Saunders, and uh, we're just. It looks a little beat up in the fender, but uh, looks like it's a pretty whole otherwise. Is that one on the road yes. too? Yes. You know, and actually, it runs, but it runs poorly. And you'll see, there's a. a I sent you a picture of a V8 motor that mm -hmm. I snagged from another Saab that was wrecked in the boneyard. There was mm -hmm. one that was rolled. So I got the motor out of that one to put in that one. That one runs, but it just runs poorly. So we're going to swap the motor. And gotcha. um, and then we already have another white bumper cover for it, and oh, nice. so and again, that's a five three, and I towed that thing from Utah back to the place to the house in Vegas using the four two six cylinder, and it pulled it <laughs> like it wasn't even there. Nice, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Hey, we've got somebody, uh, Rick Brooks, asking, did they sell a lot of the nine uh, sevens in Sweden? And I don't know the answer to that. Mark, did you look into that at all? I haven't seen the information on that yet. Um, I can only imagine that um, if they did, it would be rare because I don't, I don't hear of American vehicles being exported too often unless they're specifically sought after. Um, mm -hmm. But the 97 next, I'm well, just not you know, sure. Go ahead, oh, Saunders. You know, actually, um, our, our American I'm sorry. Our American vehicles are actually very sought over, sought after over really? there. And I've seen quite a few. Yeah, and I've seen quite a few posts um, in the 97 board as well as on. Um, I saw them a couple other places um, of of Swedes. And one guy over in Finland had one. He was asking questions on making modifications and such. Hmm. You know. And then if you look at the 97X board, you'll there's actually a couple of 97X forums that I'm on. 
in um, on Facebook. And some of these guys have made some very, very nice modifications to uh, to their vehicles to make them way more off-road capable than they were intended to. I think they were kind of like most Range Rovers. They have the capability, but, you know, most of them will never go off-road, right? Yeah. But there's a lot of guys that, you know, um, you know Mo, Mo lives over in uh, Nashville. He's got a 9.7. I spotted his 9.7X. And it was all lifted and sweet sounding. And I'm like, dude, you know, <laughs> I know he's probably like, who is this nut running up to me, you know, wanting to ask questions about my truck, you know. But, um, you know, a lot of guys have really taken them uh, to another level as far as off-road capability, you know, and taking off-road and, uh, you know, taking them out camping and going to some really rugged areas. Well, I it, it looks to me like you had Uh-oh. a lot of fun with this one. What's the story on this thing? All the front end covered in snow. Was this? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you know, on that one, I was actually on my way to to Detroit, which is where my son was, and I had just left the uh, U.S. Air Force Museum, which is in Dayton, and oh, I just yeah. got caught up in a storm and came outside, and I was just like, um, just covered with them. Um, covered with um with ice and stuff on the front did you uh did you guys see this post uh jx poe just posted uh it looks like there were five european sales in 19 in 2005 513 in 206 so look at that they've got less than a thousand of these sold in europe so that's you're right that's a pretty rare thing i can imagine there'd be some guys over there pretty hungry to get their hands on it you know, one thing I wanted to bring oh, yeah, up, yeah. I was thinking about this. You know how we talk about importing all the nice Saab things from Sweden and all the German guys are like, oh, we're going to build our BMW and import all the car parts from Germany. Think about it like this. If this, was mm-hmm. a, if this was a GM platform, I can only imagine that there's guys in Sweden importing like performance cams and, and engine parts from the U.S. to bring over there to modify their engines. I just thought that'd be cool. <laughs> Well, Saunders, uh, yeah. we just try to keep these things to about half an hour, and we're about there, so I want to wrap things up. Um, oh, goodness. Time flies. Tell us about – yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh, so what's your what's your next big project with any one of these cars? Well, you know, I promised myself I wasn't going to go crazy with the Arrow. Um, you know, my, my thing is I just love um, – I love the Mark. You know, I've been smitten since 82. Um you know, just whenever I come across them, just I, I try to catch them before I know they're going to go to the boneyard so that they get saved. That's my thing. They're, they're such good vehicles. Um, a lot of people, um, I've sold so many unintentionally. I bought these cars to keep them, fix them, have fun with them. And a friend would drive them. And they're like, oh, my God, this thing's amazing. You know, and they're like, four or five, you know, why don't you, you know, let me buy that one. And now I've got friends who um a good friend of mine as a matter of fact he's he's like you know chevy guy die hard he just got his first nine seven books you know and, a con and, and he loves him on board that's good that's I, awesome. you know, I, I try i try so if it's if it has something to do with song or or airplanes i'm all in <laughs> nice <laughs> like, the shirt, yeah, Saunders, like, like the shirt saunders like the shirt yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite plane. That's SR seventy. Oh, the Blackbird. Awesome. Yeah, nice. Yeah, the nice. Blackbird. The airplane that was built to leak on the ground. <laughs> yeah, kind of like yes. my yes. Saab, yes. as a matter of fact. Yeah. Well, but when this one heats up, it seals itself. And that's right. Matter of fact, it is an interesting story because you know Saabs came from um, you know from aircraft. That there's a there's a neat story about one time one of these guys was in distress off the co- coast of Russia, coming back toward. Um, um, you know, toward you know, Norwegian countries, and a couple of um, um, Saab, um, um, were they Gripen? Not Gripen, just two um, Vigans. Some Saab Vigans intervened to escort them back, and they purposely kept staying in between the SR seventy one and the um, and the Russian plane to keep them from being able to shoot them down. There's a really neat oh, wow. story on that. Those guys finally got recognized last year for that, and it happened you know decades ago. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, buddy, back, I appreciate back you joining us. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. There, there's others who may be more knowledgeable about this than me. Um, lastly, quickly, I heard everybody to look at Chris. Uh, 
Science of America on Facebook, and he breaks down the three models. So it'll give you some ideas to what I am. You know, it's way video. So um, you can digest awesome. it a little easier. Good deal. Yeah. Well, okay. listen, I appreciate yeah. your time, Saunders. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll, uh, I'd love to have you back to share some more stories. You've got a million of them in your pocket, and uh, we only touched a few on the surface. Many of them. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Many of them. Saunders. Be glad right, to be buddy. back anytime. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you, Bet. And thanks, Sir Kelly, for doing a little bit of research for us there. 85, almost 86,000 uh, 9.7s manufactured before they went out of production when uh, they shut down that plant in Ohio. So now we know a little more about the Saab that nobody knows. Mark, I'm glad to see you again. Uh, let's Absolutely. connect and we'll figure out what we're doing next week. Hope you have a great week. Awesome. Everyone have a great time. Great to eat. All right. We'll see you next week, guys.